You've probably heard that the best way to make money selling options such as credit spreads is that you want to look for stocks or ETFs that have higher volatility. Uh, the problem with that advice is that volatility has been really low for several years now. And if you're waiting for volatility to rise too much to place a trade, then you, you'd probably be waiting around for a long, a long time. Now, what some people end up doing is they'll go to higher volatility stocks, which still makes sense for credit spreads, but you got to deal with a lot of additional things when you're trading those type of stocks. You got a lot of whipsaws, choppiness, um, and you got to deal with earnings and all that kind of stuff as well. But if you're an index option trader like myself, who likes to trade SPX, RUT, those types of things, wouldn't it be really cool if there was some information about selling credit spreads? Uh, when uh, volatility is actually low. Well, I've done some homework and that's exactly what I'm gonna share with you guys tonight in this video. And for those who don't know, my name is Eric and you're watching Liquid Options. This is a weekly show about trading options posted each Wednesday night. Um, if this is your first time visiting the channel, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the future episodes. I put a lot of research out on here and trading index options in a low volatility environment is coming right up. All right, so let's get started and talk about what constitutes a low volatility environment. We're going to be looking at SPY for 20 something years, um, but we need to sort of define what low volatility means because when you when you you know developing a trading system or strategy, you need some clear boundaries so that you're not you know taking impulse type trades. And so, you know, I've got a, a chart of the VIX. I'm going to be using the VIX as kind of my filter as to whether or not we are in a low volatility environment. And then, you know, you ask 10 traders, you're going to get 10 different answers. Um, but here's a, a chart of the VIX. And I've, I've put this uh, line here at 18. And the initial study we're going to look at, we're going to use 18 as our low volatility number. So if, if our trigger signal, which we'll look at in a minute, uh, happens and we're below 18, we're going to look at, you know, possibly taking that signal. Um, but I just wanted to take a glance at all the trading levels for the VIX. This is 10 years of the VIX and I have uh, 18 here marked off. So you can see the line. And again, a majority of the time we are trading below 18. And in this video, we're kind of defining that as low volatility. Obviously, we could lower this some more and say, okay, let's let's try 15, let's try 12 or whatever. And I'm going to show you how you can do that um, in the spreadsheet later. We can adjust these levels, but again, we're going to use 19 as a reference. And I'm going to scroll back in time, and you can see that again, a majority of the time, the VIX is below the uh, 19 level, or I'm sorry, 18 level. Um, but then you can see back in... 2011, 2010, you guys remember those that summer, massive summer dip? The VIX traded above 19. In this case, we would not be trading the low volatility strategy because, I keep saying 19, I got 18, uh, because it's above the 18 level, which is the data we're going to look at, and therefore we, we would want to do a different type of strategy. Remember, we're trying to find a strategy for low volatility environments and it's not always going to be the case. You can see here's, you know, the the 08, 09, where the VIX was up in the 70s, 80s, almost hit 90. So again, we're not going to be trading low volatility strategies here when the VIX is up in the 50s and all this stuff. So again, we're looking for low volatility trades, and we're going to be using the VIX because the last several years, since we'll call it 2012, ish or maybe the end of 2012 it's been pretty low volatility for the past five or six years with a few spikes here now uh you know past performance doesn't you know equate to future results i have no idea what the vix is going to do you know things are getting crazy in the market we could have another summer where we spike and or it could just kind of settle down and we could mosey on uh mosey on over but still again we're using 18 as our level to define a low volatility environment. Okay, so now that we've defined what uh, low volatility means for now, let's switch over to the SPX and let's talk about the chart set up here. Now, a, one or two videos ago, um, check the previous episode. I did a video about the, I think it was the price channel trading strategy. And I talk about the price channel using the 200 day moving average 
um, as a uh, sort of proxy for a bull market. Now, because we're going to be using the VIX, we actually don't need the 200-day moving average anymore. But that was just a different way to say, hey, I want to do a bullish strategy when I'm trading above the 200. And what we're going to be doing today basically is saying, hey, if the VIX is below 18, let's look at doing some bullish low volatility uh, stuff. So a little bit different, but you're going to find that those kind of correlate together. Uh, when the market sells off hard, the VIX actually will spike, even though we were above the 200-day moving average. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit different. So I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to remove the 200-day moving average here. And we're just left with the price channel. And we're using a 10-day price channel that basically says uh, this is the, the bottom line is the 10-day low. And the top line is the 10-day high. And these are trading days. Uh, these are not calendar days. So when we talk about buy, uh, which expiration we're going to do, we got to consider calendar days versus trading days. But we're looking at trading days. And because we're really going to be looking at selling a credit spread, when we hit that 10-day low, selling an out-of-the-money credit spread, that's about 3% lower. So the other thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into my price channel. And the upper band, I'm actually going to make – uh, the color black because we're not really using that as a signal when it gets kind of, you know, there we go. That looks a lot better. So that's, you know, if, once you guys get to know me a little bit, one of the things I like, the less on the chart, the better. So this is all we're looking at. We're saying, okay, if the SPX hits a 10 day low and the VIX is below 18, look at selling it out of the money uh, put spread. So let's take an example here. Um, just, um, you know, two days ago, we had a little bit of a, a sell off. We gapped into the 10 day low. So we made a new 10 day low. This would have been a good day to sell an out of the money put credit spread. Um, and w using this strategy. Now I just got back from vacation. That's actually why there was no video net last week. So I'm still kind of, uh, re you know, uh, acclimating myself since I was gone last week. I, you know, on vacation, I was like, man, this is a nice little bull flag. And we, you know, I don't know if this is a fake out or not, but anyway, um, but this would have been a pretty good um, indicator here. So that's the trade. When we hit the 10 day low and the VIX is below 18, we're going to sell a put credit spread about 3% out of the money. Now we're going to jump into the spreadsheet that's got all the data. And then we'll come back to this chart in a minute and we'll go through a couple examples in the analyze think back and we can kind of see what kind of credits and things that we can expect from, from doing this. So let's go ahead and hop over into the spreadsheet. All right, so I wanted to share with just how this data is collected because I've done some of these spreadsheets before and I always get a question, well, how do you do, how did you do this and all that stuff? I have a, a really good programmer guide that puts this together for me. So if you ever wanted a spreadsheet like this, first of all, I'm gonna make this one available. This one's gonna be for sale in a couple days. So if you're interested in that, make sure you like the video and I'm going to put a link in the description. It is a lot of data and there's a lot of time and I, I, you know, there's some monies that go into creating these things, but I wanted to just show you kind of what we did here. So first of all, we looked at the SPY going back to February 3rd, 1993. I don't know why he chose that date, but it's a lot of data. And this goes, here is the open, high, low and close of the SPY and then the corresponding close for the VIX on that particular day. So, uh, and then basically this goes all the way down uh, to when we got the spreadsheet, which was uh, basically last month, the end of last month, 2018. So there's about 25 years of SPY data and, and VIX closes. And then my magical friend does a bunch of formulas for me because I am not a coder. I'm good with statistics, but I'm not <laughs> that good. And then what he does is he makes it super pretty for me to figure out. I put in the dates that I want to consider. I'm, for this example, I'm going to do the whole thing. And so here's the trigger point. The trigger bar is the, the number of days uh, of low, the lowest low. So this is the lowest low of 10 days, right? And 15 days later, remember, these are trading days so 10 days is two is two weeks so a two week low and three weeks later um when the vix is below and then this i can actually adjust this if i want if i want to be above or between a certain levels i've got it just below 18 because that's what we're talking about and uh the three percent below the 10 day low so i did 0.97 
And basically what this tells me is the way I you can read this is um, when for the past 25 years or whatever this is, 20, yeah, about 25 years, 25 years in a couple months, maybe. So for the past 25 years, when the SBY hits a two week low, uh, three weeks later, 3% below that low, when the VIX is below 18, the market is above that 3% level 93% of the time. I know that's a big mouthful. Let's go through it again. And then we'll we'll do it in the chart and it would make a lot, a lot more sense. When the market hits a two week low and we, you know, we would look to sell a credit spread that's 3% out of the money. Three weeks later, that credit spread would still be out of the money 93% of the time if the VIX was below 18 when the 10 when the 10 day low got hit. Okay, so let's let's go into the chart and let's let's look at that. Okay, so I'm gonna look at the SPX. Now I know that the data we've done on SPY, but um, I found it is extremely accurate with the SPX as well. I prefer to trade SPX for a various host of reasons, and we'll talk about that maybe in another video. But anyway, let's let's just look at this. So let's just take this example here. On last month on the 24th, the SPX hit a new 10-day low because it hit this yellow line. So what I want to do is say, hey, is was the VIX below 18? So we'll go to the VIX and we'll come here on the uh, what do we say? The 24th. The 24th. The VIX closed, oof, that's really close. Uh, the VIX closed at 18.02. Okay, so technically we should not take that signal. So let, let's look at another one. Um, let's look at this one here. Let's see if this one. On May 3rd of uh, earlier this month. So now we're going to go into the Think Back tab and Thinkorswim. And I've got the date there. It's, it was May 3rd. Um, whoops. This was May 3rd, 2018. We're gonna go and analyze and let's just look at kind of what kind of credit we could have gotten. Now, again, the spreadsheet is telling us three weeks later, these are trading days. So that's 15 trading days, that's three weeks. 93% of the time it's gonna be above, in this case, 2550 is what we came up with. So we can do a couple of things. We can do exactly three weeks, which is about 21 days. So we could go to, well, you know, we'll go to this particular weekly option and we could sell the 2550, sell the vertical, and we could get about 80 cents for a single strike. Now, some of you may want to widen this out and, you know, we won't get into all that, but that's a pretty decent credit. The Delta is a 20. I like Delta 20. This would be good for me. Um, but if you're the kind of person who, wants to sell something farther and then close it three weeks later, we could double this and, and let's shoot for, you know, we'll, we'll just shoot for the monthly's 42, 42 calendar days. Um, that is approximately six weeks. So again, would be selling about six weeks out with the idea we would try to collect half the credit um, or adjust. I tend to like to sell the farther ones because I like the ability to adjust. But again, that's kind of beyond the scope of this. So, we're, But we're going to sell the same, um, strike here and we get a little bit better credit. It's actually not that much better, is it? That's that's interesting. But anyway, so then if we look to, um, sorry, we are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yeah, so we're about 15 trading days later. So we come back to analyze. And if we just kind of, uh, we'll, we'll do this. We are at um, 15 days would be 10, 17, and the 24th from May 3rd. You can see in both cases, this would have been prof profitable, obviously, because the market uh, rebounded from there. Um, but, you know, depending on, you could have taken pro half profit sooner and been out of the trade, or this one would have actually expired uh, worthless in, in the 22 days. So, um, but that's the, the general idea. And I wanted to just kind of, you know, share that low volatility stuff. Now, let's have a little fun with the spreadsheet. Um, now, we, what we can do is say, okay, well, what if we wanted to establish a higher level VIX? So one thing I want you to look at here when we do this is that 
waiting for the 10 day low with a VIX below 18, we had 305 trades over the last 25 years. I don't know what that is yet, how many per month or whatever. But one thing we could do to increase our trades and what we want to do is see if the probabilities are about the same. So we could do this. We could raise the VIX with the idea that there, you know, even if we go up to like, let's say 20, let's see what that does. So by going up to VIX below 20, we increase the number of trades by about 30%. And it's still a 90%, you know, out of the money situation. So that's pretty good. Um, the other thing we could do is instead of a 10 bar low, what if we did something smaller, like a, like a seven bar low? Well, look at that. So now um, we increase the number of trades even more, but our percentage is starting to get below 90%. Not that that's a big deal. It's just, I'm just kind of, you know, just want you to see the relationships here that you can get more trades with a higher VIX uh, uh, level and a shorter number of days down, you're going to get more trades, but you're going to lose a little bit more, not that much more. But what if we kept it at 18? That's an interesting, right? So before we had this, we had a 10 day, 93%, but we had 300 trades. But if we went to a seven day low, then look, 440 trades, that's almost, I mean, that's well over 30% maybe even 40% more trades with about the same probability. So you can increase your trading with the same sort of parameter. Still, same thing. Three weeks later, 3% out of the money, VIX below 18. What if you're like uber conservative? Let's see if we said, hey, I only want to trade if the VIX is below 15. Let's see what that does. That's Isn't that interesting? Less trades, less percent. So the VIX could actually maybe be too low. Maybe that's a thing. We'll have to do some more research on that. So anyway, it's pretty cool. I thought it was good information, something to consider. The one I'm going to leave you with, I actually like the seven day low myself. Actually, let's look at five day low. Five day low was interesting. VIX below 18, five day low, not 10 day, 600 trades. It doubled the trades about the same percentage. Um, you're going to have to do that a little bit differently because you get like, like you'll get multiple trades in a row. So you're going to, you might actually be too many trades. So if this is too many trades for you, you can simply pop this back up to 10 days and you get about the same less trades, that kind of thing. So again, um, these are some, some things I've been looking at with using the VIX to establish sort of a low volatility environment. And we can still look at doing credit spreads and just some different time frames and, and discussions about entry. And again, I like to keep my, my charts very uh, plain and simple um, because, you know, it's just, it just makes life a lot easier. So um, in a couple days, if you're watching this video right when it came out, in a couple days, I'm going to put a link. If you want to purchase this spreadsheet to kind of mess around with yourself, um, I will put a link for you can do that. Um, it, it, it's going to be in a couple of days. So I got to get posted in the store. Um, and if you're watching the video well after it, then it's the links already down there. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, let me know. I love to hear your feedback in, in the comments and be sure to like the video. Give me a thumbs up. And again, this has been liquid options posted every Wednesday night and we'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.